Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have quite an interesting collaboration beer actually. This one's only just been released from the Systeme Belogit here in Sweden but should be a really interesting one. This one is half Swedish, half American and it's called Pomegranate India Paleo and it's a collaboration between Coronado Brewing Company who are from Coronado in California, quite near San Diego actually. My very first encounter with these guys but it's their collaboration with St. Eric's Brewing and they're from Arlandastad, which is to the north of Stockholm here in Sweden. So should be a very interesting one. I've tried a few different sort of fruit IPA beers, but never one with pomegranate. And pomegranate scientifically is actually quite an interesting fruit at the moment. One of my good friends is a biochemist, and he was telling me that pomegranates, um, there's a lot of research going into this now looking at oxidative stress in the body, and they think that it's very promising actually. They think that this might actually, the extract of this fruit might have some really quite interesting scientific benefits but that's more of his area. I'm a sort of physicist, chemist kind of thing, but he's more of a biochemist. So you can always tell people that if you're drinking this beer and you get a row, pomegranate does have positive health effects and the scientists back that. But anyway, as is usual with my beer reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here. If you do want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual websites are in the video description below. That's the brewery websites, the link to my other reviews from both of these breweries. Very first time I'm trying something from Coronado, so there will be more added in the future. Future. There's also the Facebook page for the channel down there. Please like it if you enjoyed the review and also my untapped profile as well. And feel free to add me as a friend on there. And as always to my Swedish and my Californian viewers, please let me know some other beers from your parts of the world that you'd like me to have a go of and I'll see if I can get a hold of them. Always quite interesting to try all these different beers that you guys recommend. But anyway, to tell you first about Coronado Brewing Company. So Coronado were founded in 1996 by brothers Ron and Rick Chapman and their family has over 100 years of history in the town of Coronado. Coronado. Now I'm calling Coronado an, a town but it's actually an island, quite a well known affluent resort island actually just off the coast of San Diego in Southern California. But the first street and Orange Avenue area of Coronado is known for having, for having welcomed many ferry boats back in the late 19th century. And the transit of goods and people through this area made this part of town a really kind of thriving place for eateries and bars amongst many other businesses. But the property on which Coronado Brewing is located was formerly the Ferry Market and later Pete's Market as well, but in the 1970s it was also home to Papa Tom's which was a favourite breakfast place for the locals. But in the 1980s Papa Tom's was knocked down and Bula's Pub and Eatery was built in its place and this was owned by Steve Lindsay and this would later become the Coronado Brewing Company in 1996 when the Chapman brothers came along. But over the course of their existence, they've expanded their dining area twice and they've also added, their, added to their capacity acquiring a neighbouring property and this really allowed them to quite substantially increase their brewing capacity. So there's a lot of output from Coronado Brewing Company these days and apparently they're quite an up and coming sort of Californian brewery. So it should be a very, very interesting one and hopefully I can review a few more things from these guys in the future. As I told you, this is my very first encounter with them. But on to St. Eric's Breaggery now. So St. Eric's Breaggery is owned by the Swedish beer importer Galatea and the head brewer is Jessica Heidrich. So the brewery is named after an old Stockholm brewery of the same name and this one was founded back in 1859 and it stayed in production until the 1960s when it fell victim to monopolization. But the old brewery, the old, the old St. Eric's Breaggery was located in Kumholms Torg King Hall Square or something like that and it was widely regarded as one of the grandest breweries in Stockholm. But in 2001 Galatea acquired the rights to the St Eric's brand and they spent nine years actually preparing the ground to relaunch it and they soon crossed paths with microbiologist and brewer Jessica Heidrich who actually went on to become the head brewer after a few conversations over the phone and things like that. But the St Eric's Breaggery operates as an independent unit within the Galatea company, one of the biggest food and drink companies in Sweden incidentally. But in 2011 they decided to invest in increasing the capacity at the Sigtuna Breakhouse in Arlandasad and this is where the majority of the St Eric beers are produced but um, Jessica Heydrich she's actually quite an interesting brewer she likes to kind of combine Swedish brewing tradition with sort of American and uh, English brewing techniques so she a lot of her beers are really quite interesting I reviewed their Oktoberfest Hellas for you just before and I was very impressed with that beer and having lived in Germany I am really quite difficult to impress with that style but she actually did 
did impress me with that one. So do check out St Eric's Brewery and also Coronado Brewing Company if you get the chance. Both the websites are in the description below, like I told you. But anyway, let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer now. That's enough history for you for this one. But I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the artwork on this one. As I told you, this beer is a limited edition. You can see this is actually quite a nice bottle. It reminds me of some of the uh, the stone ones that you get. Stone's quite a common brewery, a, quite a common California brew to find over here in Europe. And this has a kind of similar idea with the nice glasswork and things like that. On the back, it says you, even when our brewing partners originate in places far removed from our Southern California home, we still speak the same language, beer. In this case, the collaboration with Sweden's St. Eric's Brewery, we aimed to create a colorful IPA brewed with pomegranate, a contemporary blend of Australian and German hop varieties, hoping to arouse a touch of fruity tartness and hidden touches of cranberry and tropical fruit punch-like flavors for your senses to feast upon. And you can see on the back there, you can see the Coronado uh, Brewing Company symbol here, and this is the St. Eric's one as well. Very nice brew, two very nice breweries from what I hear. I, the Coronado stuff, when I had a quick look on Rate Beer, their beers were rated pretty highly and some of the St. Eric stuff I can tell you from personal experience is really quite good. A um, few things on the side there, it's got Swedish as well and it says best before, tell it says see the bottom actually but there's no date on there to tell you when it's best before but I'm sure it will be fine nonetheless but looks very good. There is the Coronado Brewing Company's symbol on the top of the, the thing there. You can see it's a nice mermaid with some beer covering up her boobies which it's a bit of a shame obviously but yeah pretty cool symbol actually and it's basically the same as the artwork that's on the front of it there but without further ado then let's get this guy open I tried looking up this beer actually to get you the hop and malt profiles as I normally like to give you on the videos but unfortunately I couldn't find them for this one as you can see a bit of a bubbly thing going on as we open up this beer but yeah should be quite nice can't really smell too much coming off it without paying too much attention to it at the start actually but as you can see it's pouring really quite nicely nice kind of pink coloured beer this one but these California beers, oh you can smell the just as the last of it comes out of the bottle you can smell the pomegranates now I've, I kind of, since I actually started doing the beer reviews, as I've told you a couple of times I started drinking a lot of fruit juices to try and get a hold of all the different fruit flavours that you can get in beer so I'm actually quite good at picking out all of these different flavours now but as you can see this beer looks really nice, you can see it's actually it's got, a nice, it's got a little bit of a kind of reddish pinky tinge to it I think but it's a fairly nice kind of bright orangey amber colour but I do want to say there is just a little bit of a pinky character to this there's a solid finger and a half there of a frothy white head on this one but very attractive looking beer actually there's a few big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass there and a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head but it looks a very very nice beer so I'm quite looking forward to trying this one as you can see there is a certain degree of transparency to it but the beer is slightly hazy so yeah, but very, very attractive looking beer. My very first one from Coronado Brewing Company, so really interested to try this guy and see what it's like. But yeah, it smells really nice. It actually smells very, very fresh. And I only bought this beer. I'm filming this review for you on the 19th of October, but you'll probably see it towards the end of November, actually, just because of the backlog of videos that I've got. But I bought this beer, I think, three days ago, so it will be very fresh because it was only just released, so it's probably about a month old or something like that. Maybe not even that. But yeah, smells very, very nice, very fresh and very juicy, actually. But as you would expect, with the aroma, a lot of pomegranate coming out. It's got quite a distinctive note, actually. I always find pomegranates to be very kind of sweet and very juicy, but at the same time, they do smell just a little bit earthy, actually. But you might find it differently, of course aromas and tastes and things are always subjective. I always say that with my beer reviews. You might pick up things slightly differently from me. But in this one you can get a little bit of a grapefruit character. I want to say there's a little bit of peach in here too. And I think cranberries as well. Like they were saying on the back of the bottle, I can actually get a little bit of cranberry juice. That's one of my favourite fruit juices incidentally. So quite used to that one. But if you shove it up a bit more, I want to say there's a little bit of a citrusy orange in there as well and there's a definite floral and aromatic character to the hops in this one and when you've got Australian and you've got German hops in this one I think it said German yes German hops there is there probably will be a little bit of floral aromaticity especially from the German noble hops actually 
And if they've used California hops, a lot of these ones from Yakima Valley tend to have some nice floral aromatic characters. I love them to have that big, sort of nice piney and, uh, and sort of floral aromatic character. But I would say it's more of a floral aromatic uh, thing that's coming off this, a noble hop character. But there is a little bit of pine resin in there. You can detect it, but it is quite subtle. But there's a little bit of bready character, maybe slightly yeasty, coming out of this as well. But the most prominent component of the aroma, as I say, is the fruity characters. The pomegranates, a little bit more of the tropical fruit as well. The, the little bit of grapefruit, a little bit of peach, but also maybe, maybe even a little bit of pineapple, actually. But I think there's a, a, a good little hint of a slightly orangey citrus in there. The orange, there's a nice juicy orange character to this one, and I really quite like the, the aroma of this one. But yeah, as I always say with my beers, do check, the, do check the aroma a little bit before you actually get stuck in. can always be quite an interesting indicator of the flavours, actually. And for me, being a chemist by trade, now a physicist, it is always a little, an interesting thing to think about with the different hops. But anyway, let's get stuck into this beer. So this is the Pomegranate India Pale Ale, a collaboration between Coronado Brewing Company in Coronado, California, and St. Eric's Bakery from Arlandestad near Stockholm in Sweden. Skål! Hmm. That's quite nice actually. Just let your palate adjust to it a bit before you start to pick out the flavours too intensely. Yeah, that's nice and interesting actually. It's quite a juicy IPA this. It's not one of these kind of California ones that's going to go straight in your face and give you a punch in the mouth with hops. It's nicely balanced, it's got a good balance between a bit of that hoppy dry character but there is a good little bit of kind of fruity juiciness in there and that's the kind of balance I enjoy with that style of beer actually. I do enjoy ones that kind of blast you with hops but at the same time something a bit different like this is always a nice little change of pace. But yeah, the hops actually do come out of it a little bit more as you take a few more sips. But as you would expect, it's got a nice kind of juicy fruity character. The pomegranate flavours in there are quite obvious. The fruity characteristics of this beer come in. There's a little, behind the very front curve of your tongue, you get a little oily bubble, and that's where a lot of the fruity characters come out. The pomegranates, incidentally, are added to the brew. They're not a kind of natural flavour that are coming out from the hops. The pomegranate is added to the brew, but you probably would have guessed that anyway when it's called pomegranate IPA. And if you've got any experience of the style, hmm. But yeah, the pomegranates have a nice, the pomegranates actually have a very kind of nice and quite, they're, it's actually quite a subtle juicy character. Around the edges of your tongue you just feel this slight wet character coming in, that's the pomegranate flavours coming out, but underneath that you're starting to get the sort of florally and aromatic elements of the hops. It does become a bit drying, so the, the very edge of your tongue, you get this transition from being a nice wet juicy pomegranate flavour and then the sort of floral aromatic characters of the flavour start to break out so really quite an interesting little aspect to the flavour as well. Mm. But yeah, as I say it's got a nice balance between the sort of juicy aspects of the flavour and also the slightly drier aspects of the hop as well. So some nice pomegranate flavours in there. If you go just behind the front curve of the tongue, you get the little oily bubble, and that's where normally your fruity characteristics come out. So there's a good bit of grapefruit in there. And as I said before, there are some peaches as well. Mm. I want to say, yeah, it's, it's definitely a slightly, pe just a little bit of a peachy flavour. The peach is actually quite subtle. But there's a nice bit of grapefruit in there that just backs up the um, just backs up the pomegranates quite nicely. It gives that the, the, the grapefruit to me always has this little bit of a slightly um, almost sour character. Grapefruit is a very distinctive fruit, and I always kind of describe it as being a little bit sour. But you'll just detect that behind the very front part of your palate. But there's a little bit of peaches in there, and just a little bit of pineapple too. But I want to say there is a slightly appley flavour to this one, but very mild. And apple is a very kind of subtle fruit unless you, you put a hell of a lot of it in there. But there is just a little bit of a kind of appley flavour in this beer as well. Mm. But yeah, around the edges of the tongue, like I was saying, there's a good floral aromatic character in there. It's not 
as punchy as some of these ones you can get. There's a little bit, if you go to the very back corners of the palate too, you can get a little bit of earthiness and that's the German hops coming out of this one I think. It's a typical kind of smooth German noble earthy character in the very back corners of the palate. But as you come forward a little bit, the beer gets a little bit more dry and that's the floral aromatic flavours coming out there. Maybe there's a little bit of pine resin in there but um, you can detect that more in the aftertaste. There is a kind of piney flavour that just lingers on the tongue there. But in the middle of the palate, the, the malt base is very subtle actually. I'd be interested to know if they've used sort of uh, Munich malts or something like that in there or Pilsner malts. It is very smooth and very light so it's quite a, a kind of nice light bready characteristic that's coming out of this one. Really quite an interesting aspect to the flavour that. Yeah, there is maybe just a little hint in the very middle of the tongue towards the back. There maybe is just a little hint of a caramel sweetness there, but I think it's a very light, quite bready and kind of Pilsner malty base that's on this one. But overall, there's quite a, a nice a blend of interesting flavours going on in this one. And I think it's a limited edition. Pretty sure it won't be done again, but who knows. But I think if you do come across this beer, give it a go because it is something different. And the pomegranate flavours in this one kind of blend together with the rest of the beer really quite well. So it is worth trying if you come across it. And if you do try it, please let me know in the comments section where you've come across this beer actually. So in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, it's mid-bodied, the carbonation is moderate, slightly oily mouthfeel to this one as well actually, and as I told you, there's a nice bit of juicy character in there. You've got a little bit of juicy oiliness uh, just behind the front of the tongue, but the pomegranate comes in with a nice kind of slight um, juicy flavour in there. It just comes in with a nice juicy mouthfeel and then that subsides and then you start to get the more kind of bitter and dry hoppy characters from this beer. There is a little bit of malty sweetness but that's very mild. Overall the malt base is just a light kind of coating of the tongue but overall this is a really quite nice beer and it does become a bit more dry as you go into the aftertaste but yeah very very nice beer. It'd be a cool, it's actually a very good one to visit Coronado with for my first time. What I'm surprised at about this beer, the one thing I will say about it is that I'm surprised surprised that this is being released as a winter beer for me. If I was brewing this beer, I'd think this would be an ideal one for the summer because from what I remember, pomegranate is more of a summer fruit. So yeah, I'm quite surprised that they've released it later when the winter's starting rather than doing it in the summer. But then again, the climate in uh, California is considerably different from Sweden. So maybe it's still good for the weather over there. But for me, this is a kind of ideal summer beer. A really interesting one. To try pomegranate in the beer for the first time is really quite good. And I, like I say, I would highly recommend you do it. If you enjoy um, these IPAs, I've tried a few of them from Toul, for example, from Denmark. So um, if you like that kind of beer, the sort of IPA style base with all these different fruits added to it, this is definitely one for you. And if you like pomegranates and IPAs, can't really go wrong with this one, but hopefully I can review a few more Coronado beers in the fairly near future. Not sure how easy they are to get here in Sweden, but fingers crossed I can find them, and I'm sure I will review some more St. Eric's ones for you fairly soon. But as always, let me know in the comment section below your own thoughts on this beer if you do happen to have tried it. I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. Until the next one, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. As I say, hopefully I can visit both of these breweries again. Coronado seemed like a really quite interesting one, but I thank you for watching my beer reviews. Please like, subscribe, share, as I said, until the next one, but I will catch you soon with more beer reviews. There'll be a lot more from Sweden and hopefully some more from California fairly soon as well. But slander just now.